everyone welcome or welcome back to apple makes it is the fourth episode of yarn time and i realized wow it's already the end of january i need to get another update up here we are with some of what i've been working on and let's just get into it i don't know why every time i try to film it is so dark outside um so i have my ring light on and hopefully it's not too bad I also thought I would take advantage of my tripod and film on my bed today so I have all of my stuffed animals behind me um, keeping company. Oh yeah, something else that I want to talk about also is like knitting goals for the year, I guess. So instead of like talking about my plans for like specific patterns, I want to talk about what are my goals for the year that I want to accomplish for myself. Um, as a knitter. So I will talk about that at the end of the video as well. All right, but today I have a very exciting finished object to show you. My Ingrid sweater. Let me try to get her into the frame. She's a little wrinkly uh, because she's been folded. Um, but if you recall from the previous episode, I cast this on on Christmas, like day of, and I just worked on it like a maniac up until then and i finished it so this has been off the needles since i think about a week or so ago i washed and blocked it and it looks amazing um i'm it's kind of big so i'll talk about that in a second but let me try to let me try to get her in there um so i knit a small thinking that i would make this for myself and when it came off the needles, it was like a perfect size. So I'll put in a picture of what it looked like on me um, when I actually finished it. Um, but then I washed and blocked it and I wasn't expecting it to grow so much. Um, when I washed my swatch, it didn't grow that much uh, lengthwise that I could tell. Um, but I think just with the weight of the yarn, my row gauge is a lot longer than I was expecting and so it's actually really quite long on me. So I'll show another picture of what it looks like um, on me after I blocked it and you can see especially the sleeves are too long. I think the body is fine and I actually did modify the body. So that's my the first modification I made was I shortened the double ribbing at the bottom of the body because I was getting down to it and it was clearly getting too long so I shortened I think from 16 rounds to 10 but then with the sleeves because I like my sleeve long usually um, with the sleeves I went ahead and adjusted the full 16 rounds um, which at the time was perfect but I didn't take into account how much it was going to grow lengthwise and so it is a little too long like I think it's still wearable but <laughs> um, I actually was at my family's house when I finished it because I was still during actually no it was it was actually Chinese New Year <laughs> so I went back to um, see my parents during Chinese New Year and my brother was there as well and he is like a little bit taller than me and um, you know he's got wider shoulders and everything so I, I hadn't tried on and it actually looked really good on him so I'll show another picture of how it looks on him so you can see it fits him way better and I think actually the color suits him a lot nicer too so I said, you know what, I'll give it to you. Cause I was planning on making him something anyways. Um, I was gonna make him a cardigan, but I just wasn't happy with how that project was going. So it's been, um, I think I'm actually gonna frog at that one and start a new project. But I felt bad cause I told him I would make him something. So I was like, all right, you know, this looks so good on you. How about you just take it? Except I said I wanted to film the video with it in hand. Um, so he's gonna come pick it up um, at some point. But yeah, I'm so, so happy with this. Um, it was such a fun knit. I mean, everyone who knits the Ingrid sweater says that, um, but it's totally true because every section is different. Well, I mean, there's repeating sections, but it's like, you know, you have a section and then it's like just long enough to really get into it and kind of get into the groove and then not too long where it's like you're getting bored of it. So I really, really like that. And I enjoy all the stitches that are involved in this pattern. Like I really like the mock cables. Those are really fun. I love moss stitch. Um, which I think I said in my previous video, I always like a good double moss stitch. And I think also the ribbing looks so nice. Like I think 
uh, double ribbing that's been washed and blocked out is, I don't know, it just looks so classy. I don't know, I really love it. Um, so I'm actually planning on making another one for myself that will fit me better. So I'm waiting for the yarn for that to come in. Uh, this is in Knit Picks, uh, Wool of the Andes Worsted, and this is in Crane Heather. Uh, it's, it's really dark today, so you can't really tell, but it's like a really cool sort of neutral gray that like sometimes it looks on the cooler side and sometimes it looks on the warmer side. So yeah, I really like this color. But to be honest, I think it really just looks better on my brother. So the yarn that I'm getting to make another one is a more like beige tweedy color. Also Will in the Andes, but it's like their tweed line because if it's the same yarn, then I don't have to like swatch it again and save me some time. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend this pattern. Um, I think uh, when I make it again, I'm going to keep the shortened double ribbing on the body and then just match the double ribbing on the sleeve um, as well so that it's not the full 16 that it's only 10 and then i'll cut a little bit of length and i think make it fit a lot better because i think width wise it looks fine on me like i do like the oversized look for me and that's kind of what i wanted but the sleeves are just too long and i can totally see it being kind of annoying um, because i do tend to roll up my sleeves a lot anyways when i'm doing things so if they're like flopping about too much i think that would get really um, in my way. All right. Um, but other than that, no mods. Um, I, I kept the collar as is. I know a lot of people like to do like a folded collar, which I think looks fine, but I think that the original collar just suits the pattern so much that I wouldn't want to change it. If anything, I think I might want it to be a little, uh, a little higher and be more of like a mock turtleneck. So I might consider increasing the length of the single ribbing at the end here, just because when it blocks, it does stretch out a little bit, so then it doesn't sit up as high, which is kind of like a pro and a con, I guess, because, um, you know, with the wool, it's not it's not itchy after blocking, but it, you do still feel it a little bit around the neck. So, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, the neck is the last thing that you, that you do on this pattern, so it's easy to modify if needed. I don't know, I have, I could talk about this all day probably, but that's pretty much what I wanted to show you all. Um, definitely recommend this pattern it's a lot of fun and i can't wait to make another one honestly <laughs> uh, i think the yarn is supposed to arrive like on wednesday or something today is sunday so i think probably once i get it i will um get started <laughs> uh, but yeah let me fold this nicely so that it doesn't get wrinkled again i'm a little sad actually it's only been sitting in my room for like i don't know like a week all right, so the next sort of is like half a finished object and then like a whip. And so I know that sounds really confusing, but you'll see what I mean <laughs> right now. So I actually just started um, another pair of socks. Uh, this is using the same pattern as my previous pair of socks, the Just Plain Socks by Talena Winters. With some modifications that I said I was going to make. Because the first time I made a pair of socks, I was really happy with them, but they were too big. In like the heel slash gusset area uh and i don't know if it's just like i have a really flat foot or something but it just didn't fit me that well it's a little baggy so this time i cast on the same number of stitches but i just didn't do as many heel flap repeats okay i think the last pair i did 13 and then this time i shortened it down to eight and i think it just looks a lot more <laughs> like a proper slim sock and it fits a lot better too um, because that made the gusset also a lot smaller. Um, I did have to lengthen the foot to sort of compensate for that a little bit, but not really by that much. And then the other fun thing that I did was I did uh, contrasting uh, heel, toe, and cuff. So the main yarn is another Araucania Hosco sock hand painted. This one is Inca Dorado, I think is what it's called. And I really like how it came together in the sock because the yarn, uh, which I think I have a skein here somewhere. So the yarn looks like this, uh, caked up. So you can see like it has these short color repeats. So in the base of the yarn is like kind of a light yellow color. And then it has these short repeats of orange, brown, and blue. And so what happened when I was knitting around the sock was that the repeats were like, they would kind of connect. 
because I guess of the circumference of the the leg of the sock so it made like a really cool sort of like spiraling pattern and this is very obvious on the foot of the sock as well so I think that's super cool because um, I've seen some projects with this yarn on Ravelry and I wasn't like super into kind of the speckled appearance because when you have a longer row right the repeats the color repeats are farther apart so they make more of like a speckle pattern which you can kind of see in the gusset part of the sock but because of the small circumference of the sock um, I think the repeats are like close together like the circumference of the sock is very close to the distance between the repeats if that makes sense so they connect and make this cool pattern so I was really happy with that and then I picked a what, what is this yarn okay so the the contrasting yarn is stroll from knit picks uh, which is super soft by the way super soft soft yarn and i picked up i think this is rainstorm heather so it's like this nice dark teal blue which i think looks good with the socks so yeah i'm really happy with this uh modification that i made my only gripe which i was going to talk about in the previous video and i totally forgot because i had so many other things to say about the sock is the needles that I'm using for my socks are these these fixed circulars from Addy, which I got from I think Wool Warehouse because I didn't have a pair of three millimeters. Like my none of my interchangeable sets have three millimeters, and I think honestly these are hard to find in the U.S. for some reason. So I got these from uh, Wool Warehouse. Like I said, I think this is the hundred centimeter length. I don't know. I'm not good at eyeballing. I mean, this looks like it could be a hundred centimeters, maybe. Like this is a yardstick <laughs> anyways um but my gripe with these is that they're super blunt i don't even know if you can tell um they're very blunt and i feel like they're even blunter than any of my other needles even though they are larger diameters and so it does make picking up stitches or like knitting through the back loop or anything like that like anything where i really have to like get the tip of the needle in there it makes it really hard to do which is kind of annoying honestly uh so if you're knitting socks or i guess knitting lace i really would not recommend these addy i just got them because they were cheap and i just needed a three millimeter but i'm definitely going to try to buy some three millimeters from like a different brand if you have any recommendations for good small diameter needles uh drop them in the comments because i'm kind of sick of these <laughs> like they work but it's like it's it's kind of annoying so that's my only gripe, but other than that, I'm very happy. And I finished these, I finished this sock in like a week. Which doesn't sound very fast, maybe, if you're someone who knits all day, every day. But I only have time to knit like for like, I don't know, one or two hours every day after work. So me finishing this in a week, to me, is very impressive. <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I have time to finish the other sock at some point. And, and then I'll have another pair of socks to add to my collection. Very exciting. So that's my um half fo half whip situation with the socks all right so now i'm going to move on to actual whips uh which i have sort of two all right so one is my sweater number 15 um uh, which i feel like has appeared in so many episodes already because my progress has been like that of a snail it's not because this is a slow knit it's just because i spent a month or not a month i spent a few weeks only knitting the ingrid sweater and so obviously this was not being touched at all during the time, but I finished off the first sleeve and I did modify it to decrease out one cable. So I don't know if you can see, like this is the underarm. So one of the cables gets smaller and smaller and eventually just becomes like nothing. <laughs> um, so basically my method was every time I did a cable twist to decrease out just one stitch, so it's a very gradual decrease and then once I got the cable down to just one stitch I started decreasing the pearls around it. I actually had it the other way. Ooh, got that on my nose. Uh, I actually had it the other way around so once I got to one stitch I actually decreased out the knit stitch entirely and then it was just pearls but that looked really like there's too many pearl stitches in a row or too many reverse stuck in it in a row so I actually like laddered it back down which is why it looks a little wonky um but i think it looks better this way to like still have a little bit of knit in the middle there and then this is where i end up decreasing also the pearls 
And so, <coughs> excuse me. So I think that looks nice because I didn't want a flared sleeve or at least to the extent that the pattern or the design has originally. So having just like a slight taper, I think is nice. Um, it looks super squished and weird, which I'm hoping it will block out because when I tried this on, the sleeve was really fitted. It made me very nervous because that's not what I wanted, but it is going to block out. Like I feel pretty confident about it. Um, my only problem is that I didn't make a cable swatch when I was uh, getting ready to make this project. I only had a stockinette swatch and I was too lazy to make a cable swatch, which, which is on me. Like that's my bad, I know. Um, but I just like don't know for sure how it's gonna block out. So I think it should be fine. It's also the yarn is Drops Flora, which is an alpaca blend. So it definitely will grow also quite a bit. Um, so I'm not too worried right now. I'm just, I'm just trusting. I'm just trusting and believing, but I do. Oh, it looks really good on camera. I just love this all over cable. So I'm about halfway through the second sleeve. I'm hoping to get this done maybe like at the end of this week i don't know we'll see um how fast i can get through it this is like my current what i'm working on like i'm not really trying to be distracted hopefully but yeah i'm really excited to get this finished and blocked um and i can start wearing it <laughs> and and finally have like a wool sweater that i've made myself because my previous finished object was my cotton sweater which I also have been wearing a lot, um, but it would be nice to have like a nice warm wool sweater. So I think it's gonna be pretty cold in the upcoming month. Like February is looking like it's gonna be colder than January. So this is definitely super warm. Um, so yeah, so that's the state of my sweater number 15. Um, I promise you by the time the February episode of Yarn Time rolls around, this will be finished. <laughs> I promise and I will not be giving it to anyone. I will be wearing it, hopefully. So I just have one more thing to show you. And then I think I had like some plans to talk about. I haven't really bought any yarn or I don't have any yarn on hand to show. So this will be hopefully a shorter episode, but I can talk a little bit about what I'm planning to do. So I just have my, <laughs> I have my notes here. All right, next whip, which is not really a whip because I only have a swatch for it. I literally swatched this last night and uh, blocked it. But I finally swatched for the olive cardigan that I'm going to make for my mom. So here it is. Um, you can see a super cute leaf motif. Uh, the swatch shape looks really wonky because this is like just uh, two repeats of the sleeve chart. So they're like supposed to, I don't know if you could tell, like the leaves are supposed to fit together like this leaf leg, right? So that's why it has like this weird curve. So it's not that I suck at knitting swatches, it's like, it's supposed to look like that. Um, but yeah, so this is Olive Cardigan. I mentioned it a few videos back um, and I said that I was kind of nervous to start it because it is a charted pattern. And just like looking at it is a little intimidating, but after finishing the Ingrid sweater, which is like semi-charted, I guess, um, I was like, all right, I feel ready to tackle this. And actually it was not bad. Like it really is not bad. I think the only thing that was intimidating me really was there is for the, like this kind of stem part of the leaf it's like a it's a you slip two as if to knit and then you knit one and then you pass both of the slip stitches over so i just had never done that before but it's not really much different than doing like um the eyelet pattern in the ingrid sweater if you know what i'm talking about so yeah i'm it's super cute like i love how it's like kind of subtle almost like the leaf pattern is mostly defined by these um this combination of increasing and decreasing. So you do the stem, the, the stem decreases, I think. And then there's also increases happening. Um, there's like make one right, make one left. I don't know, I'm not explaining it very well. If you're, if you're interested, you can go by the pattern and take a look. But I do also love this color. Sorry, this is probably so blurry. Um, the ring light is like making it hard for me to see if things are in focus or not. But I love this color. This is the Persimmon Heather, also Wool of the Andes um, from Knit Picks. I just really like their yarn. It comes in so many different colors um, and it's very affordable. So I picked this out for my mom and she really likes this color. She likes orangey colors. She likes sort of like fall colors. So this is perfect. Like it's the leaf 
and an orange like it's just like the perfect fall situation like i don't think i personally would look that good in this i don't know i'm i gravitate more towards sort of like pastel neutrals but i think on my mom it would look really nice so um i'm really happy to start this and i think i actually managed to get gauge uh, which i'm shocked by personally um, I used the six millimeters recommended by the pattern for a size small. And I think I did actually get the 17 stitches for four inches. So I'm, I'm happy um, that I don't have to struggle with the gauge. And I'm excited to see how it comes together. I mean, the whole cardigan, here, I'll put a picture in case you aren't familiar. The whole cardigan is just covered with these leaf motifs. So I think it'll be a fun knit. And because the gauge is so big, I think hopefully it'll be pretty quick as well. Um, because even though it is charted and, and it, there is like some, you know, you do have to keep track of the stitches. It is like a pretty easy repeat to get a, get a hang of. So that's exciting for me. All right, so that's the only other whip I have going on. I do have a few plans. So I actually did also swatch for Cami number five, also by May favorite things knitwear. Um, I just, I fell in love with that pattern like the first time I saw it. I think when I was watching Tiffany Lou, one of her episodes like a year or so ago, she showed hers. And at the time I was like, oh my God, I would never be able to do that. That's like on three millimeter needles. It's crazy. <laughs> but I, I don't remember what prompted me to buy the pattern. I think I maybe saw someone else doing it too, but I don't remember who it was. I'm sorry. But I actually had a lot of fingering weight cotton lying around because I went through like a cotton yarn buying phase. So I'm going to be doing it in like a sort of nude-ish color. And I only, I did swatch for it, but it's literally just double ribbing. So it's not worth showing. Um, so I think I might work on that like on and off. I mean, that's obviously a summer pattern. So now is not the time to wear something like that, but maybe, Maybe in like the next few months, I might work on it on and off because it does seem like a really fun pattern to try. And I've never done double knitting like edges before, which I did see a lot of people complaining about that on Ravelry. So I'm hoping it's not too, too bad. So I'm excited to just try it and see how it goes uh, because it does look really sleek. And I think the fit also looks great. So I'm excited to try that and use up some of my cotton yarn that I have sitting around. So that's one of my plans. I think, I think that's pretty much the only thing on my docket. Like I have some other like thoughts flying through my head of what I wanna make, but I don't wanna commit to anything because I know that my mind will probably change and I wanna focus on what I have right now. So that's everything that I'm working on or finished or will be working on. So what I'm gonna talk about now are some of my goals for the year as a knitter. So just for a little bit of background, I started knitting last March. So March of 2022 was when I first started knitting like for real. Before that, I had been crocheting for about a year. So it's coming up on about a year of me knitting and I'm pretty happy with where I've gotten, but I do have some goals for myself. So I will talk about them. So the first thing is I want to make more gift knits. Um, I kind of had like an accidental one with Ingrid sweater, but I want to be a little bit more intentional about like making stuff for people. So I'm hoping that like the olive cardigan from my mom will help improve, uh, I guess my gift knitting mojo as people like to say. Um, and I do have some ideas for things I want to make for my friends. Um, but yeah, just being um, really trying to be generous with my hobby, I guess is kind of what I want to do for this year. And I think what was kind of holding me back last year was primarily just uh, like lack of confidence because I was new to knitting. And I, you know, I don't want to make something that um, other people won't wear because it's like not up to standard or whatever, which is the nice thing about giving stuff to family because, you know, I can kind of force them to wear it <laughs> and they'll appreciate it. But yeah, I think that was kind of what was holding me back. But I feel a lot more confidence in my knitting now and I feel like everything that I do try, I'm able to make it work. Um, hopefully that's not, that doesn't sound too braggy or anything like that. But I think it's good to be confident. Um, and so I think that was part of it. And then also, I guess some of it is like trying to think of like what other people would like, because I'm personally just not good at gift giving in general, because I always have a hard time 
Like I'm very indecisive about what I think someone else will like and use. But I think ultimately people will just appreciate um, if you put some thought into it. So um, I am hoping to get some fun projects finished this year for my friends and for my family. So that's my first goal. And then my second goal is maybe a little ambitious, <laughs> but I really want to try designing my own pattern. I've done like my own raglans and stuff, which those are not hard um, as long as you kind of measure and get your gauge right. But I really want to try designing a cable sweater um, this year because I have cable sweaters that I've purchased like from shops that are like acrylic sweaters. I really want to replace those, but I do like the design of a lot of them. And so and my goal this year is to try designing, I guess, sweaters inspired by the ones I have in my closet right now so that I can replace them with the hand knit version. Um, I think that would be a good place to start maybe as a beginner um, to like base my design off of a pre-existing like retail pattern. And then I don't know, we'll see from there. <laughs> but I am a little intimidated by obviously making sure that the construction is good and that like the instructions make sense. Um, because it's, it, you know, it's one thing to design a pattern and you just knit it for yourself and it just like lives inside your head and whatever. But I don't know, I want to be able to share anything that I make. So I'm going to be working on that. Um, I did actually start charting like a rough draft. Um, but I think maybe I'm going to try actually knitting it up first and then charting it. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I've never done this before, so I don't know what workflow makes sense. But I definitely do want to try it out. And I think it'll be fun um, because I do like designing stuff. I'm just nervous about, I guess, like the technical aspect of it. And um, like I said, making sure the pattern makes sense. And then also, of course, um, trying to make the different sizes fit properly right you know i obviously know how to knit for my own body size and shape but that's not very useful for people who are not the same shape so we'll see i think i think hopefully there are resources out there for people who want to make patterns if you've ever designed a pattern and you know any of those resources i would love to know about it um you know i'm probably not going to get started on right away but that is my other big goal for this year and then finally, a sort of more minor goal, I would like to keep improving on my knitting speed. I think I have gone faster just from like muscle memory. Like I do notice that I'm finishing stuff a little quicker, maybe, <laughs> maybe than before. I mean, I finished the Ingrid sweater in like three weeks, which to me is like insane. So that's something I want to work on um, is getting faster at knitting. And then also like trying to knit without looking at my hands, which I have a lot of like, I keep trying to do that, but for, I just, I can't get the hang of it. Like, I could probably knit, like, stockinette without looking at this point. But anything that requires switching between knit and purl, I have not gotten the hang of yet. So I will keep working on it. I mean, that's a pretty minor goal, and it doesn't really matter that much if I manage it or not. But I think it's, like, a fun little challenge for me to at least knit faster and then see if I can knit without looking at my hands. Because then I could, like, really watch anime while knitting. <laughs> I've been watching One Piece recently. I started, started in December, I think, and I love it. Like, I love it so much. It's so much fun. I think some of the filler episodes are not that good, um, but if you're looking for a really long-running anime to watch while crafting, definitely recommend. I think the first 300 plus episodes are on Netflix, and then I switched over because I finished all of those. <laughs> Uh, I finished all of those already, so I have to switch over to Crunchyroll, I think, um, which also has all of them for free. Uh, it's just the skipping, like, you know, the Netflix UI is just a little bit better. Anyways, that's just my little tangent slash recommendation. Um, but that is everything that I wanted to share today, I think. That's everything I had written down. So as always, um, anything that I mentioned, like yarn, patterns, etc., will be in the description box. And uh, again, let me know if you have any resources for like designing a pattern. What was the other thing that I wanted to ask about? Oh yeah, recommendations for sock needles. Um, that's the other thing I'm looking for. So if you have either of those, I would love to hear it. Um, I do always love when people comment. I respond to every single comment. <laughs> so, or at least try. I don't think I've missed any so far. Um, so yeah, please talk to me and I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be back um, next month with another one. 
um, see if I can fit in another knit and chat at some point. Maybe. We'll see. I've been pretty busy, but I do enjoy making these. So I will see you next time.